hello and welcome back in this video we will continue from where we stopped with the gas absorption modeling right in this video we will uh, model the regeneration of the absorbent right the absorbent so that is what we will model in this particular tutorial then in the last video we will model the recycling of the absorbent right so here we are going to make use of the specifications for the distillation column right the regeneration occurs in a distillation column so we need a distillation column from our model palette so you go to separator and then you get your distillation column the feed to the distillation column is the tube outlet of the heat exchanger right so we have that set now we can make specifications in the column yeah, so we need first off we need um our inlet stream is the tube outlet of the heat exchanger then we need condenser and reboiler energy energy stream that is for that one then we need outlets for this okay for the um for the condenser we'll make use of for the for the condenser we'll make use of full reflux right full reflux so this will be our vapor outlet and we'll name it acid gas we'll name it acid gas then the bottom the bottom is the regenerated absorbent right the regenerated absorbent is the bottom which will be recycled back to the absorber so we just name it this okay enter so we are done specifying the um we are done specifying the uh design of the column the first phase right then let's check the number of stages number of stages is 18 so we have to make adjustment to this so this will be 18 right so we can now make other specifications to the distillation column stage numbering is top down then you click on next we leave this as default once through regular heises we'll still click next then for condenser and reboiler pressure we have this here 190 and 217 kpa One ninety and two and seven KPA. Then we don't have temperature specifications, so we will skip that and specify reflux ratio. Yes, we have reflux ratio, so we are good. We click on done then you can now go to your monitor to check your degree of freedom so degree of freedom is zero but we did not specify overhead vapor rate so let's go back okay but we have mass fraction of co2 so we can specify that instead so you deactivate overhead vapor rate because we don't have the value and then you add spec so we are adding mass fraction spec let me see column okay let's use this add spec 
yes so it's column mass fraction then the stage is, is the reboiler right then the phase is liquid component is co2 so you specify the component co2 mass fraction of co2 in reboiler you specify and then you specify the value the value is 1e minus 3 so 1e minus 3 so we specify the stage reboiler the flow basis the phase and the spec value as well as the components involved so you can exit this before we run our column we will um, add one more specification from the spec right we'll add one more spec which is the um the condenser temperature right the condenser temperature so we will make use of coulomb temperature add spec condenser then we we'll specify the value we we'll specify it as um, 82 degrees celsius right 82 degrees celsius then we will activate we will activate the condenser temperature instead of comp fraction after we specify condenser temperature and component fraction we can now run the column The column is still running. Yes, and the column has converged, right? So we have been able to simulate the regeneration of the um, absorbent, of which we can check from the worksheet. You can check the composition so here from the um, product side for the product side we have this for the top right acid gas which consists of a high amount of co2 and h2s 0 0.3119 0 0.3782 then you have some water in it as well while for the regenerated absorbent you have the dea present in high quantity right when you compare it to the amounts that entered from the feed you see that most of the dea comes out from this bottom outlet then you have water as well right so this is the um regenerated absorbent that we have from the distillation column right so this is what will be recycled back to the uh, absorber right so so the technique here is to is to recycle this bottom product back into the absorber right via a recycle operation so that is what we'll be modeling in the third tutorial video right now before we get there we can still do some other additions we can change the die okay let me see okay this is good yes so we can still make further additions to this model then we end this video and continue in the next tutorial for the recycle now we will add a pump to the outlet of the distillation column the bottom outlet so we'll be adding a pump to it 
so for that pump we have the let's check the spec of the pump So for the pump, we have a pressure drop of 6859 kPa. So we will add a pump to our process, right? So that pump will be somewhere here. The centrifugal pump, right, be here. And the inlet to the pump is the bottom outlet of the distillation column the regenerator so we are changing the direction of this so this is the pump is um this that is the inlet and the outlet is the shell inlet of the heat exchanger then we can specify a an energy stream for this and then specify our pressure drop which is 6859 once you specify pressure drop the the pump should solve yes so the pump should solve 6859 6859 yes so we have specified this pump for the um the the shell inlet so now that we specify the pump details right the shell inlet is fully specified right and you see that the this uh, the heat exchanger has solved entirely right so it didn't solve before because we did not specify the shell inlet details right but now that we specified it you will see that the heat exchanger has solved completely right so we have been able to simulate the absorption and the regeneration right so the next step is to simulate the recycle right but there are some things you need to know before you start modeling recycles and that is why i will take it in a separate tutorial right but before we end this video um let's model some addition to the our product outlet right so this product outlet is the um separated gas mixture right the mixture of gases that have been separated from co2 and h2s right so we want to compress this gas compress it and then cool it as well right so we are going to compress this using a compressor using a compressor you have um let's see yeah, this is a compressor so for this we'll check the details from the problem statement so we have this outlet pressure is 2.003 e4 right that is the outlet pressure for this compressor so we are going to do that So outlet is and then inlet is sweet gas. So in this case we are specifying the outlet pressure. Outlet pressure, let me see. Outlet pressure is two point zero zero three E four. Yes. Right, so we have specified the outlet pressure of this compressor and the compressor is fully specified. So we have increased the pressure of our product from 6996 to 2000, that's 2 times 10 raised to power 4 kPa, 2.003 times 10 raised to power 4 kPa from 6 from 6996 and you will notice that that increase in pressure has led to an increase in temperature of the product 
from 40 to 142.6 so we still have to add a cooler that cools the product down right so we need a cooler to bring it down bring down the temperature we can specify the outlet as cng then i will specify an energy stream for this cooler then the inlet is the outlet of the compressor which is this cooler in then we can check the comp the cooler details from our specification so for it we have we have outlet temperature of 10 degrees celsius and then um pressure drop of 20 kpa so that is what we'll be specifying so pressure drop from parameter section we specify 20 kpa then for for the temperature we are making use of 10 degrees celsius so these are solved as well so we have finished with our product stream our product stream is now very okay right so this is our product stream cng you can show table right this is our product stream and these are the specifications we have temperature of 10 degrees celsius pressure of 2.001 times 10 raised to power 4 kilopascal and molar flow of 566 to see the specification clearly so this is it 10 degrees celsius pressure 2.001 in 4 then molar flow of 566.1 kg mo per hour right that's the spec specification of our products right of which the product doesn't consist of co2 and h2s co2 and h2s have been removed from our product stream right so now this um uh let me reduce this so you can see it clearly the bottom product from this um, distillation column is supposed to go back into the absorber right right so that is what we'll be simulating in the next tutorial right so at this point we have come to the end of this particular lecture right if you have questions on what was done in this lecture kindly send your comments like this video and then subscribe to this channel for future notifications on process simulation thank you for joining me hoping to see you in the next lecture do have a good day